In signal processing, we spend a vast amount of time working with sinusoids. And before we start that process, I want to give you some of the reasons why we do this. Why is it that we study sinusoids? Well, there are at least four fundamental reasons why sinusoids are so important in signal processing. And I'm gonna start with the lesser reasons first, and we'll conclude with the most important reasons. First of all, sinusoids occur in nature, and that is the physical world. And there's a lot of examples. So electromagnetic waves, such as light, a pendulum describes sinusoidal motion, crystal oscillators, a tuning fork oscillates in a sinusoidal fashion, and there's just an endless number of examples where sinusoids occur in nature. The sinusoids are also used extensively in communication systems. In the United States, the Federal Communications Commission allocates specific frequencies for different purposes. So you have radio like AM and FM, and if you listen to the Badgers broadcasts of football or basketball on WIBA, that's broadcasting at 1310 kilohertz. So that's the frequency of the channel. Similarly with television, it broadcasts, each station broadcasts on a specific frequency. Your cellular communications with your phone works the same way. And almost any communication system is based on sinusoids. So they occur in man-made systems as well as occurring in nature. Now, one of the most important reasons sinusoids are studied extensively in signal processing is the fact that any signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids. So if you have music or speech, you can describe that signal, you can represent it as a sum of sinusoids. Images, same thing. FMRI signals, likewise. Stock prices can describe them as a sum of sinusoids. Electroencephalogram, brain waves, that is, and, and so on. Any signal you can think about that you might measure, you can represent that signal as a sum of sinusoids. So sinusoids are fundamental building blocks that can be used to construct any signal. And this makes them super valuable from a signal processing perspective. More importantly, a very large and useful class of systems, linear time invariant systems, those kinds of systems can be completely characterized by how they respond to sinusoids. And this is a fundamental property that's extremely useful. And the way that it works is if you put a sinusoid of a certain frequency into a system, the output signal is a sinusoid of the same frequency, and the only thing that has changed is its amplitude and its phase. And so the effect of the system is to change the amplitude and phase. And this leads to a very intuitive interpretation of the behavior of systems that's super powerful. Some examples would be like filters. Now filters, their job is to separate things. I mean, we talk about a coffee filter. It separates the grounds from the liquid. In signal processing, we talk about filters that separate signals based on frequencies. So we could have a low pass filter, which passes low frequencies and attenuates higher frequencies. Equalizers are similar ideas. In fact, you may have used one if you're a musician or you play around with music much where you can adjust the gain in different frequency bands. So even a simple bass and treble adjustment is an equalizer. You're, if you boost the bass, you're changing or increasing the gain to the low frequencies without changing the gain to the high frequencies. So these kind of systems inherently work on the idea how the system impacts the sinusoids. Now, when you combine this property together with the previous one, that is any signal can be represented as a sum of sinusoids, you have a super powerful combination. You can analyze and understand much of signal processing if you understand how signals can be represented as sinusoids and how systems act on 
sinusoids. So developing skills with sinusoids is a super important and worthwhile effort for this field of signal processing. And I encourage you to keep that in mind as you spend time diving deep into the details of sinusoids and representing signals and systems in terms of them.